dementia researcher with a blog and a rating. In many cases, but not all, there are unjust differences in the health and opportunities between people who are affected by dementia and those that are not. For example, access to timely and good quality healthcare, benefits, housing, work and rights. These are just a few of the many inequalities people may face. Another inequality, and one that shaped my initial entry into academia, is people's participation in physical activity. In a society manufactured by elites and the closely and increasingly so connected private sector, profit and in recent times austerity has been the horrible ideology of the state. Key arms of the public sector through which many inequalities can be managed, such as education, housing, prison, health and social care, have been hallowed out and left in a state of emergency. Instead, action on inequalities tends to be driven by local government, research and development departments, and innovation by voluntary and community sector organisations at place and neighbourhood levels. In this post, I'll provide a brief introduction to the evidence based on physical activity and dementia, which clearly suggests action on increasing participation and reducing inequalities in physical activity as a political mandate. I will also include my experience of developing and evaluating an intervention to increase opportunities for people to participate in physical activity. Hopefully you don't need to read a fancy paper to know that being physically active is good for you. But if you did, the science is definitely in favour. It is preventative against a range of long-term conditions and can even reduce the risk of dementia by up to 50%. In a more qualitative sense, physical activity is socially rewarding offering opportunities to connect with others and community, harnessing and maintaining a sense of self and place. It really is no surprise that being physically active supports healthy ageing and can increase the amount of time we spend in good health, narrowing the gap between rich and poor populations. But just because something's good for us doesn't mean we will do it. I would have quit smoking years ago if this were the case. Physical activity is no exception, Participation levels are low across the board, but as the graph illustrates, the number of people who are physically active in England dropped off in later years significantly. In the over 55s category, only around 50% are considered active, which would be a considerably lower figure for people living with dementia and their carers, who are suggested to be less physically active than the general population. So why are we seeing this age-related drop in physical activity levels? Well, like any social issue, it's complex, caused by much more individual behaviour, although that's the frame in the media tend to adopt, because addressing the bigger picture, if you like, is far more costly in the immediate future, cost-efficient in the long term, however. Barriers to regular physical activity for people living with dementia, some of which apply to older adults as well, include physical and cognitive impairments, need for family or carer support, professionals having limited understanding to offer physical activity, societal stigma and that there are simply not enough accessible opportunities. For carers then, physical health, having the time for physical activity and the nature of their care work are reported barriers. An interesting theme is the role of the carer in motivating and facilitating physical activity in the person with dementia. Considering the nature of barriers for carers then, there seems opportunities for dyadic interventions that better reflect the relational and practical aspects of care. To increase participation and prevent physical activity related inequalities, the evidence base couldn't be clearer. A focus is needed not only on individual behaviour and relational factors, but organisational and societal issues as well, what I referenced earlier as the big picture. For example, through the social ecological model of health to influence opportunities at policy, community, organisation and individual levels. I have been lucky enough to support the development and evaluation of an intervention aimed at supporting positive change through empowering professionals with the knowledge and confidence to increase opportunities for people. A short online course called Champion Physical Activity for People Affected by Dementia. The course was developed at the Association for Dementia Studies off the back of a PhD research completed at the university in this area. We engage people ensuring the voice of lived experience remains central to the vision of the course, influencing the development of content and priorities. The course is aimed at a diverse range of professionals to reflect the many places in which physical activity can be facilitated. 
For example, the initial pilot included health, housing, leisure and education professionals. Five topics are covered over a six-week period through a blend of synchronous and asynchronous learning, including taught sessions and self-guided activities such as video clips, reading materials and online discussion boards. The ultimate goal being that more people feel empowered to provide opportunities for people to participate in physical activity. Evaluation of the pilot comprised data from pre- and post-course questionnaires, focus group, interview and a reflective diary completed by the course lead. Given limited resources at our disposal to develop and evaluate the intervention, we kept the focus to assessing the impact on practitioner knowledge and confidence to deliver leisure and physical activities for people affected by dementia. Self-report data from questionnaires shows a marked change in professionals' knowledge, perceived competency and confidence following completion of the course. This was also supplemented by qualitative accounts of change and some promising preconditions for future impact on practice. To ensure we did not neglect the focus on improvement, as there was much learning to be extracted from the project, we captured key factors of course delivery affecting changes. Three key themes arose from the analysis. One, delivery mode and course structure. Two, multidisciplinary approach enabled creativity and a community of learning from diverse practice. And thirdly, making the remote real through lived experience. Following feedback and evaluation, the course has been amended and updated. We will be running the course again, not for profit this autumn, and we would welcome any interest. Thanks for listening. Ta. Thank you for listening. Join the Dementia Research bloggers and share your own views.